Hello everyone, I'm Chao Jianzhang. Today I'll be introducing you to the basics of how optical fibers work. Optical fibers are the most common medium for transmitting optical signals. This course will cover the history and physical construction of optical fibers, optical transmission principles, multi-mode and single-mode optical fibers, optical cables, and some commonly used optical passive connection components. Before optical fibers were invented, communication was implemented by transmitting electrical signals over copper cables or twisted pairs. But twisted pairs and copper cables have short transmission distances and a limited transport capacity. For example, when 2M electrical signals are transmitted using 75 ohm copper cables, the longest transmission distance is less than 300 meters. When 1G signals are transmitted over twisted pairs, the transmission distance is no longer than 100 meters, even with the latest G-fast technology. In addition, the cost of copper cables is very high. In 1966, Charles Quan Kuo, a Chinese-born British scientist, suggested using light conductive glass fibers to transmit optical signals. He pointed out that if we could reduce the impurities in the glass fibers, we might be able to use it for practical communication. Kao's work on fiber optic communication laid the foundation for contemporary optical communication methods, and he is known as the father of fiber optics. In 1970, based on Kao's work, an American company by the name of Corning successfully developed the world's first silica fiber with an attenuation of 20 dB per kilometer. In successive studies, fiber attenuation was continuously reduced, which today is as low as 0.2 to 0.3 dB per kilometer. Optical fibers are formed of highly purified glass made from silicon dioxide extracted from quartz sand. Quartz sand is one of the most common minerals on Earth, making optical fibers very cheap to produce. Starting from the 1990s, Optical fiber communication became the most important and commonly used wired communication method because of its large transmission capacity, long transmission distance, low cost, and high anti-electromagnetic interference capability. So how does an optical fiber transmit optical signals? First, let's have a look at light reflection and refraction principles. As we can see from the figure, when an optical signal travels from medium 1 into medium 2, both reflection and refraction occur at the interface. If the refraction index of medium 1 is higher than that of medium 2, the refraction angle is greater than the incident angle. There exists a critical angle. When the incident light reaches the interface between medium 1 and medium 2 at the critical angle, the refraction angle will be 90 degrees. In this case, the optical signal will not enter medium 2. When the incident angle is greater than the critical angle, total reflection occurs. In this case, the optical signal will be limited within medium 1 and will not enter medium 2. The optical transmission of fiber optic communication uses the total reflection effect of light. Next, let's take a look at the physical construction of optical fibers and how they transmit light. An optical fiber consists of three parts, fiber core, cladding, and coating. The coating protects the optical fiber by increasing its mechanical strength and bending degree. The fiber core and cladding are both highly purified silica, but different doping agents make the refraction index of the fiber core higher than that of the cladding. Therefore, after the optical signal enters the fiber core at a certain angle, the total reflection occurs between the core and cladding achieving light transmission. Now that we know the principle of fiber optic transmission, what are the types of optical fibers? We categorize optical fibers into the single mode and multi-mode based on different light transmission methods. First, let's take a look at a multi-mode optical fiber. Optical signals are high-frequency electromagnetic waves. The common wavelength of optical signals used in communication is 1.31 micrometer or 1.55 micrometer. The diameter of multimode optical fibers is 50 micrometer or 62.5 micrometer, much larger than the wavelengths of optical signals. In this case, 
The optical fiber allows optical signals to enter at different angles, and we call these optical signals from different angles different modes. Therefore, we call this kind of optical fiber the multi-mode optical fiber. Due to different transmission speeds of different modes, the multi-mode optical fiber has high optical dispersion and latency, restricting the multi-mode optical fiber to be applied in short distance transmission. The orange optical fibers we see are multi-mode, marked with MM. Now let's look at the single-mode optical fiber. The diameter of a single-mode optical fiber is 9 micrometer, which is at the same level as the wavelengths of optical signals. In this case, the optical fiber allows only transmission in the same direction as the axial direction, also called the fundamental mode. We call this kind of optical fiber the single-mode optical fiber. We can simplify the optical transmission mode of a single-mode optical fiber to linear transmission along the axial direction. Single-mode optical fibers have large capacities and long transmission distances, and they are the most commonly used optical fibers in contemporary optical communication. Single-mode optical fibers are generally yellow and marked with SM. The ITU-T defines a number of standards. Our commonly used standards are G.651, G.652, G.653, G.654, and G.655. The G.651 standard is used for short-distance multimode optical fibers. The communication wavelength is generally 850 nanometers or 1310 nanometers. G.652, G.653, G.654, and G.655 are all single-mode optical fiber standards. The G.652 optical fiber has the optimal performance and is the highly recommended type in our WDM system. G.653 and G.655 fibers have strong nonlinear effects and therefore are not suitable for the WDM system. G.654 optical fibers are mainly used in submarine cable systems. I'd like to briefly mention that the attenuation varies under different wavelengths. The 850 nanometer wavelength has extremely high loss and is therefore used only for short distance transmission. The multi-mode signals are used for transmission due to low cost. In the 1310 nanometer wavelength range, the attenuation level is appropriate for both multi-mode and single-mode signals. The attenuation in the 1550 nanometer wavelength range is the lowest, and therefore we use this range in the WDM system. Next, let's take a look at optical cables. An optical cable is often composed of optical fibers, plastic tubes, and a plastic coat. We can bury it underground, hold it in the air, or apply it to the submarine cable system accordingly. Optical fibers in a WDM system are generally buried underground. A stranded loose tube optical cable has a strengthening core, buffering tubes, and a coat. Each buffering tube has several optical fibers, and an optical cable often has 6, 12, 48, or 96 optical fibers. Finally, let's take a look at some common optical passive connection components. Let's look at the optical fiber connector first. Optical fiber connectors are mainly used for the precise connection between two optical fibers so that the optical signal energy can be maximally coupled to the receiving optical fiber, implementing the interconnection between different optical ports. Optical fiber connectors are classified into fural connectors, square connectors, loosened connectors, and mechanical transfer registered jack adapters, according to different port types. Currently, the most commonly used types are FC, SC, and LC. FC is a round connector that is fastened by a screw thread. SC connectors are square and use the bayonet design to facilitate installation and maintenance. LC is an enhanced addition of SC. It also uses the square structure and the bayonet design, but is only half the size of an SC. The density of LCs during installation and maintenance is relatively high. The LC interface is used the most in the WDM system. According to the contact surfaces of pins in the optical fiber connectors, we can categorize connectors into flat, physical, angle physical, 
and ultra-physical contact types. The contact modes of FC, PC, and APC are flat, spherical, and angled spherical, respectively. The most common one is the PC type. The APC type mainly applies to optical ports with high power. Finally, let's take a look at fiber jumpers and attenuators. Fiber jumpers are used to connect two different optical ports and usually have two ends. Based on the port types at both ends, we can categorize them into FC-SC, FC-LC, and FC-FC. Optical attenuators are mainly used to attenuate optical signals so that the optical power is within the allowed range of the receive end component, preventing overload or burning the receive end component. Optical attenuators can be classified into fixed optical attenuators, mechanically variable optical attenuators, electrically variable optical attenuators, and the most recently introduced small form factor pluggable optical attenuators. Well, that's all for this course. To recap, we have covered the history and physical construction of optical fibers, light transmission principles, multi-mode and single-mode optical fibers, optical cables, and some common passive optical connection components.